Okay, so I'm sure you guys have all heard the rumors about how Doritos companies <coughs> purposefully put some special powder on them to make them addicting. What we don't think about is how this same intention to addict us is what is in our beloved iPhones. So I'm not going to state the obvious today. I'm not going to tell you that phones are overused and that millennials need to socialize more. But I will tell you about how they are purposefully addicting, a little bit of psychology behind all of it, and some techniques you guys can use to maybe lessen that addiction. So this is a slot machine, I'm sure you guys all know what it is. So you pull the trigger and you either get a big award, a small award, or nothing at all. The thought of maybe not even getting something is what makes this so addicting. This is called the intermittent variable reward. Um, so the possibility of not knowing what you're going to get is what makes slot, machine, slot machines so addicting. This same concept is what is in a lot of the apps on your phone. You don't even think about it, but when you pull to refresh your Instagram, your Twitter, your, even your mailbox, you're basically doing the same thing. Um, a formal Google employee has said that without that three second delay, Instagram wouldn't feel variable. There's no sense of will I win because you'd know instantly. So this is just showing that this is very similar to a slot machine. But how do we know that slot machines really are that addicting? Um, well, according to NYU professor Natasha Dauschel, um, in her book, Addiction by Design, she says that slot machines make more money in the U.S. than baseball, amusement parks, and movies combined. So that just shows us how addicting this intermittent variable reward really is. Um, so the first thing that companies do to keep you intrigued by your phone are these three little dots. So you send out, you type out a text, and if these things didn't exist, you'd normally just turn your phone off, put it to the side, and not really think about it until you hear um, whatever your notification sound is. But with these, it keeps, if you see someone's typing, it keeps you on your phone and keeps you spending more screen time, which is exactly what these companies want. Um, another thing is all in Snapchat. So Snapchat has kind of turned its social media into a game, and it's not really even about talking to your friends anymore. It's more about keeping your streaks or stressing when you see the little hourglass. Um, Julian Morgans, a writer at Vice, said that it's clear here the goal is more important than enjoying the platform as a social experience. Um, this is a clear sign engagement mechanisms are driving usage more than enjoyment. So this just means that the actual keeping your streaks or setting up streak snaps is basically what's driving you to use it more than actually enjoying the app. Um, also, in an article about technology addiction, they said that some teens get so stressed when they go on vacation, they give their passwords to their friends, and this completely defeats the point of social media because you're not even the one experiencing it, it's your friends doing it for you. Um, so it's just showing that they really are addicting us by implementing the streaks. Um, the next thing is red. So if this didn't exist, you could read a text, you don't reply to it for hours, and your friend wouldn't even know. But with this, you feel obligated to reply to them right away, and that is exactly what these companies want, and they're doing it on purpose so that you are guaranteed to reply to a text. Um, the next thing is autoplay. So if this didn't exist, and you were just watching your Netflix shows, you would end the show and you'd have to consciously think about clicking on the next thing you want to watch. But with this, if it automatically plays the next episode, you don't even really have to think about it, and they're kind of manipulating you to get you to watch more. Um, so now I'm going to talk about some of the psychology behind it. But how do we really know that these companies are doing it on purpose? Well, Sean Parker, the founding Facebook president, has said, how do we consume as much of your time as possible? That means we need to give you a dopamine hit every once in a while, like a like or a comment. This is a social validation feedback loop, exactly the thing a hacker like me would think of. So this is direct evidence coming from the founding Facebook president that the companies are doing this on purpose. Um, so one of the weaknesses that these companies play on in humans is that we will just mindlessly consume. So Brian Watson, a professor at Cornell, did a study where he gave one group of people a bowl of soup and another group of people a bowl of soup, and one of the groups had a self-filling bowl and they weren't even aware of it, and they actually consumed 73% more calories than the other group without even being aware that they were more full or that they had, had consumed more. So this relates to autoplay because um, you will just mindlessly consume and not even really realize it. Um, the next thing was said um, in, according to Human Technology, which is a company um, working to fight against what these companies are doing and trying to make more, make, make more of it aware, um, is run by the former design ethicist of Google. And he says that red is a trigger color that instantly draws your attention. 
So if you look here, this is why all of your notifications are red, because the red just pops way more and then your eye is instantly drawn to it versus what it would be if it was blue. Um, this same thing is implemented in app changing. So you may think like, why did Instagram change its classic app color? Because they know that your eyes are more drawn to warmer colors and red. Same as Google and Airbnb. So now that I've told you a little bit of the thoughts behind it and some of the psychology, I'm going to tell you how you can maybe try to fix it. Ah. Um, so first thing is maybe just turn off your notifications. Uh, Facebook's head of marketing has bragged that the average millennial checks their phone 157 times daily, which is 145 minutes trying to feel connected, validated, and liked. So if you turn off your notifications, you'll be less likely to check your phone as many times in a day. Um, the second thing is make your phone screen gray. This will eliminate the um, tools that they're using with how your eyes are drawn to red because you will go on your phone and click on what you want to go on and not really what you're drawn to. The last um, suggestion I have is implementing using quick reactions because this just, again, reduces the amount of time that you're on your phone and you can reply to people but still not take time typing it all out. So in conclusion, unlike Dorito consumption, we can uh, control the amount of time we spend on our phones. Um, so maybe just be more aware of these things that companies are doing and maybe try out some of my suggestions.